Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring a Richardsonian Romanesque style house in St. Louis, Missouri. This house was built in 1904 and boasts over 3,700 square feet. Let's go see what's inside. So before we even go inside, we start to notice these striking details on the facade. So there are these solid granite staircase that lead up here to a tile mosaic portico. And there are also these solid granite columns with the Corinthian tops above them. And this supports the porch. Before we go inside of this house, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Terry Uday for opening the doors to this house for us. And you'll hear more from him in just a little while. We've just entered inside of this house and let's start exploring. So this house was built in 1904 by the Griesdick family and they were beer barons here in St. Louis. So that's just a really interesting little bit of history that goes along with this house. Now, first thing we see in this home is this amazing staircase. It has these intricately carved mill posts and also this light on top here. And this is actually all original to the house. Let's look up at the ceiling and there's an original chandelier up here as well. So let's just take a moment to see this. Something else that's just amazing about this house is the wood floors are original. So these were added when the house was constructed and this runs throughout pretty much the entire first level except for the kitchen. Directly across from the staircase is this old radiator and it has this cast iron top on it. So you can set things here, you can keep them warm. If we keep coming this way, there is this arch cut out underneath the steps and there's actually a coat closet in here. So let's look at that for a moment. Moving out of the foyer, we now come into the parlor and this has beautiful windows. It has these sconces supporting an archway with a turret. And this turret is what we saw on the outside of the house. This extends all three floors and it's really fun as we go up. So we'll explore all of that in a bit. Also, there's the original stenciling up here on the ceiling. So let's take a moment to see that. And over here is the original fireplace. Now this house has two functioning fireplaces. We can see it has the original mantle and the original glazed tile that goes with it. And if we take a closer look, we can see the crackling that has happened over time here. Coming out of the parlor, we now pass into the dining room and there's this beautiful set of pocket doors here. They're painted on one side and burly pine on the other. So I'll just go ahead and shut this and come on in here. There are a whole bunch of details that we can talk about in this dining room. So let's start off with this fireplace. It has faux marble and then the original tile and the cast iron grate that goes on it. And then as we move over here, we'll see the chandelier above us original to the house as well. There is an entryway that goes out to the backyard and then all of these big, beautiful windows that let in a lot of natural light. Now, if we look up at the ceiling, there is a plaster medallion that is also original to the house and then this plaster trim that runs around the entire perimeter of the room. Over on this side of the room, there are some amazing details to point out. So first of all, all of the woodwork in this room is burly pine. So we can see all of these swirls in here and this is from old growth trees and it's not really something that can be replicated today simply because these types of trees just don't really exist anymore, at least not in a practical sense where you could introduce them into a house as trim work. Moving down this wall, we now see these sconces up here, and these are also original to the house. They are leaded glass, and they really let off an opalescent flare. So if we really look at them, we can see purples, teals, greens, kind of popping through the orange colored glass. So let's move on through here, and this is going to take us into the kitchen. So the kitchen has been recently remodeled, and let's just take a moment to look around this space.
Passing out of the dining room, we come into this little nook space that's adjacent to the kitchen. And first I'll point out that there's a pantry here. It has its original crystal doorknob with its original hardware as well. So we can go ahead and peek inside up here. It is completely built out. So there's a lot of organization and storage options here. And something really fun is if we look above this pantry, there was an old transom window. Now the owners decided obviously not to board that up or drywall over it, but just to go ahead and leave that opening and repurpose it as a television shelf. So that's a really fun and new adaptive way to reuse an old design. Now off of the side of here, we see this other crystal doorknob and this one's a little different with different hardware as well. This leads into a powder room and it has a pedestal sink, marble floors, a freestanding toilet, and a very large window that looks into the backyard that lets in a lot of natural light. So let's just look around here. And then coming out of the bathroom, we start to notice these other details that have been left in this house. And even though this kitchen is new, it's modern, we can see that the counters have been retrofitted to this old millwork. There's a tin ceiling that soars above us. And then over here are even old speaking tubes. And this would have been used for the original owners to call their maids down into the kitchen or about the house to do different chores for them. So it's just really fun that these little details have been left. And then if we come over here, there is this old leaded glass window in these doors. And this provides a little bit of privacy while letting in more natural light. And it's just really awesome that these have been preserved here and left here to be enjoyed by future generations. Let's go ahead and leave out of the kitchen. And we're now going to walk back into the stair hall. So come on through here. There is an entrance down to the basement over here and servant staircase. We'll take the servant staircase to the third floor, but for now, let's take the grand staircase in the front of the house. Let's go check out what's upstairs. As we begin to walk upstairs, we notice that the stairs are coated in these beautiful runners. And then there are also these little pieces of intricate millwork that fall off at the bottom of the posts. Arriving at this landing, we now see a leaded stained glass window. And this is actually original to the house. And something really interesting once again, and we saw this at the house in Belleville, the stained glass over time, it begins to sag and warp towards the bottom. So we can see that down here. It's just a really fun detail. So as we continue up these stairs, these posts become more intricate. There are wood carvings that go down on the edges and we're immediately greeted by this crystal chandelier and a mural that's directly above us. Coming into the first bedroom, we now pass underneath this leaded glass transom. So come on in here and let's start to look around. In this bedroom, we have the original hardwood floors. There's also the original radiator over here to the side. And then there's a small closet that sits off to the side of this as well. Moving out of this bedroom, we are now going to explore the second bedroom. And this bedroom, once again, has this leaded stained glass transom above it. So come on in here. It also has the original fireplace as well as the original tile. So let's take a closer look at that. And then over here to this side, there's this curved radiator that matches the curved walls inside of the turret. And then a beautiful window that lets in a lot of natural light as well as this niche over here. And you could imagine putting a bed in here or a desk, something along that nature. Over on this side of the bedroom, there is a pocket door that's going to lead us to another bedroom. But first, let's see these rounded corner walls this would have been a labor of love. This is not something that was common back when this house was built, just because of how expensive and how much work went into making them. Let's go ahead and open up this pocket door and head on into the next bedroom. So come on in here. Now we're directly above the dining room and we can see that this fireplace lines up with the fireplace in the dining room as well. It has the original mantle on it, as well as the original cast iron piece that fits over the fireplace. 
there's a radiator between these windows. And once again, a lot of windows in here lets in a lot of natural light. And this room is actually pretty large. Let's look up at the ceiling because it has the original plaster medallion as well as the original light fixture that goes with this house. And then something really special over here, there's a door that goes out to a deck. Once again, a different style of crystal doorknob, different style of hardware. So let's go check out what's out here. Coming out here, one of the first things that really catches us is this wood paneling that surrounds the door here. And this is kind of capping off the brick that's on the exterior of the home. Out here, we can see that we've got a lot of privacy. There are hanging plants on this terrace and a nice little sitting area to really enjoy the outdoors. Let's go back inside now and check out the rest of the bedrooms. Now we're going to make our way back out here to the stair hall. So come on through here. Immediately, we're greeted by these rounded corners. Again, this would have been very expensive, very rare for a house like this back whenever it was constructed. Come on down the hallway. There's a compact radiator right here. And then these sconces that are supporting this archway. Come on through here first. And there is actually a toilet room. The bathroom has marble floors. It has marble trim around the windows, marble trim around the doorway. And then the windows themselves are privacy glass, so they let in light without letting someone see in or out. Coming out of the water closet, we're now going to go next door into the bathroom. And this has all of its original tile. It has this beautiful rounded bull nose that goes with a the rounded corner theme that we've been seeing throughout this house. There's marble trim around the windows, around the door, around the mirror. There's a freestanding pedestal sink, a clawfoot tub, and once again, more privacy glass over here to just allow in a lot of natural light while still retaining privacy in this space. Passing out of the bathroom directly across the hall is another bedroom. And this is the final bedroom that we'll see on the second floor. So let's just look around the space for a second. Now we've seen everything on the second floor. So we are now entering the maid staircase. Come on in here and we're about to go up to the master bedroom. Arriving at the top of the maid staircase, we're once again greeted by these rounded corners. There's a large closet over here, and this third floor is basically one giant master suite. So let's go ahead and flip around, and we can see another really large closet over on this side as well. Now we can go ahead and check out the master bathroom. So come on in here. There are these green marble floors, a giant jacuzzi tub with mirrors, a walk-in shower to this side, crystal chandelier, once again, original to the house, and then more privacy glass on the windows. And these are newer windows up here. Passing out of the master bathroom, we're going to cut back across this landing. So come on through here. And now we are actually entering the master bedroom. In this bedroom, there's a ton of natural light. There are actually 10 individual windows in this room. And there are a few other really just awesome things to point out. So first of all is this compact radiator, once again, original to the house. There's more storage over here or an attic entrance. And then there's built-in storage along this window bench. And this is really deep. You know, this is probably a good two and a half feet deep here underneath these windows. As we cross around to here, we find our first leaded stained glass window. Off to the side of this is another compact radiator right next to the bed. So in the winter time, you can imagine how nice this is to have a heat source that's right next to you. Directly above the bed is another leaded stained glass window up here at the apex of the gable to allow more light to filter in. And as we cross over to this side, we see that there is an entrance over here to the turret. But first I want to point out this fireplace with this rose colored stone and the original cast iron inset in here as well. So come on into this turret space. This is set up more like an office at the moment. 
and there are different colored leaded stained glass windows all around the perimeter of this room. All right, so now that we've seen the entirety of the house, let's go check out the backyard. Exiting the back door, we now come to this little stoop and we can start walking down into the yard. One of the first things that we can see is that the larger deck is actually over here and that comes off of the dining room. And that deck that you see up there is what we were in in the third bedroom that we explored. So coming out here, there's this lovely stone path that cuts through the garden and it's going to lead us over here to another sitting area. And this yard is actually really spacious for the area. Now that we've seen the backyard, let's go talk to the listing agent about this house. Terry, thank you so much for opening up the doors to this unique house for us. Um, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and about this property? Sure, absolutely. So my name is Terry Udy. I'm with Remax Edge. This is our newest listing at 2915 Russell Boulevard. It's in Compton Heights. The home was built by the Griesedick family in 1904. It's a little over 3,700 square feet, and we're asking 625,000 for this home. Um, it's got beautiful original features, including original millwork and mantles. Uh, my favorite feature is the three-story turret, um, all with windows, with curved windows on each level. It's beautiful both inside and out. Thank you everybody for joining us on this tour. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.